Hey everybody, welcome to Bass and More Outdoor. I'm Justin. Sorry it's so dark out here and so late. We actually just got done winterizing the camper and doing that video. Um, I'll put a link below to that one so you can check that out. But um, this is our last night with the camper for the next six months. I'm hooking it up now as I'm leaving super early in the morning to take it down for winter storage. So I wanted to get this done before I can't do it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how we hook up the camper. So the first thing we do is, I actually have airbags on my truck. This is a um, half ton, and due to the fact that it's half ton, it's coil springs only. It doesn't have shocks or anything else. So when you actually hook up, it sags quite a bit. So we installed air shocks on our truck, and if you guys ever watch any of my fishing videos, you know I'm cheap. I got an air pump, I don't have an air compressor. I do have an air compressor in the garage, but this actually doesn't take long at all. And I like to run about 30 PSI, seems to be the magic number for me. Um, so, got to have our bloopers. <laughs> Definitely. Wouldn't be a Bass and more video without something happening. <laughs> so, what we do is we fill this up to about 30 PSI. Uh. Alright, so as you can see there, I'm at 30 PSI now. Now that we've got the air in the airbags, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to back the truck up and we're going to actually you know what no we're not going to back the truck up yet i see i'm getting ahead of myself we're going to go over here and we're going to lift up our stabilization bars now on here you can actually see that i've got a retract and extend button so we're going to retract this up and as you can see they're now going up and we just hold that button until they're all the way up, both of them. There we go, that's the front. Here's the rear, same thing, retract, extend. We're gonna retract. <laughs> you gotta love it when it's all power. <laughs> yeah, right? So, now that we have those up, with the help of the lights, not only on our hitch, but on our camper, we're gonna back this up and get this lined up, and hopefully we'll get this on the first shot with the lovely backup camera. So, let's give this a shot. Perfect as usual. So now that we've got that lined up on the first shot. <laughs> Good job. It's actually not perfect. I'm going to have to pull a little forward to get that to line up. But we just hold the button down and this thing lowers right down onto it. So all I did was release the parking brake and I'm just gonna slightly push the truck forward and it should just drop into place. There we go. So now that we've got that in place, this will drop into place. And once we have this in place, we just put this pin in to hold it, lock it. Now we're gonna raise it back up. And the reason we raise it is for our weight distribution hitch. I don't like to fight the bars and try to really pull it up. So what I do is I raise the truck up to where the bars simply just slide right on. Um, this is the way I found it to be faster, easier, and safer. Once you start to hear the jack struggling a little bit like it is, we're probably good. So we're just gonna take our bar, we're gonna locate our hole down here in the bottom that it goes into, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push it upwards until it snaps into place. Once it snaps into place, we're gonna slide it back. And then if you look here, you'll see our pin. We're gonna remove our pin. Then we're gonna pull our latch down here. And I do five links. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five links. And that's where I'm gonna hook it up to is on that fifth link. And I'm gonna pull my bar back into place. 
and then I just reinstall the pin. And I did the exact same thing on the other side. So now, we're ready to lower this all the way down and get these blocks out. So we just hold the button down until our, our leg here is all the way up as high as it'll go and it stops. And as you can see, now the weight is off of the blocks and on the truck. We're almost all the way up. I should take this time to thank my wonderful wife, Mikkel, for her amazing camera work. Oh, thanks, babe. So, blocks out of the way. I just put those in the bin over here. Then, after we do that, I remove the chains from their convenient little holder, and I actually pop them into place. And I put them this way, because it seems like it's gonna be a lot harder for it to come unhooked than if you were to put it this way. So, I always hook them that way. And I always take the one with my brake cable wrapped inside of it. That's the emergency brake for the camper. And I always run that one on the same side as the brake. So as you can see, the cable is one nice fluid motion all the way up, just like that. And then, of course, we always plug it in. Well, usually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very rarely. So, and that's all for the front. So now we're gonna grab our handy little wrench. And this wrench is for our X chocks. Um, our X chocks are amazing as they help keep your camper from wobbling back and forth as people are walking inside, and it just gives you that extra peace of mind of knowing the camper's not gonna move. But when they'll um, but after it's hooked up to the truck, this is when you remove these, not before. Yeah, you wait till the very end. And to I get just these loosen out. it enough to where they come out. I don't loosen them all the way so that next time they're almost ready to go already. And then, of course, we move our wheel chocks under the wheels. Okay, then we'll go on the other side and remove the other one. I forgot to tell you, you have dirt on your back. Huh? It's cute, you have dirt on your back. All the chalks are now removed. So, there's only one thing left to do at this point, from what I can tell, which is unhook the power and roll the power cord up. And I always do the power last, and mainly for the fact that if you have your slide out out um, or as you're bringing up your stabilization arms um, or the tongue jack stuff like that that all wears down on the batteries on your camper now yes while i'm hooked up and towing the camper it's charging the batteries but i like to know when i get to the campsite i've got as full battery as possible so that as i unhook everything and one of the last things i do when i'm unhooking is unhook from the truck so that the batteries are still as full as possible that way i've got more battery life um, than if I were to do all that while unhooked from the truck or on power. So that's one of the last things I like to do just for that reason alone. Um, you can do it first if you want, doesn't matter. But I just roll it up nice and tight and then put it in that same bin. And I store everything that is involved in hooking up and unhooking the camper in the same bin. It just makes it very convenient for me <clears throat> and just easier when you're getting ready to go. So all the bins, all the campers completely locked up but this one. So now when I'm ready to go, I just close up, lock up this one bin, and voila. Here, let's see what that is. We're now ready to tow, just like that. And this, uh, given the airbags and the weight distribution hitch, is the best way to level out my camper. It doesn't look very level right now, and that's because my driveway where my truck is parked is slightly sloped for water drainage purposes down this way. But as soon as I get out on the road, you find that the truck is completely level. And between both the airbags and the weight distribution, I only lose or raise a quarter inch in the front end. That is pretty good and I don't lose any in the rear end at all. So that helps me out best when towing and makes things tow so much easier down the road. And this thing, um, 
I have a camper video on this talking about weights. I'll put a link on that below. But it's 5,300 pounds dry weight, and it's almost 7,000. It's like 6,900 something fully loaded. And I have a Dodge Ram 1500 Bighorn Edition. It's got the 5.7 liter Hemi engine with the 3.92 rear end. And with this, I can easily tow. We, we go to Salt Lake City all the time for Lagoon. And it's about a five hour trip from here to there. And the speed limit on the road is 80 miles an hour. And there's times where I'm finding myself above 80, between 80 and 85. And we're still only at about 2000 RPM. So this tows extremely well with this camper. And it is a total of 27 foot long from the tongue to the spare tire hanging off the back of the bumper. <clears throat> so just wanted to give you guys that quick video on not only how to hook up, but what I'm towing with. I've had a lot of questions in my last video about what I'm towing with and what I've got. So now you guys know. Um, please do me a favor. Give this video a thumbs up. If you have not done so, please subscribe. You can do so in the video on the bottom left hand corner. My left your right bottom right hand corner <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> or you can do so right underneath the video and um, as, as you know all videos have that subscribe button down there um, everything that I used here today will be listed below in the description along with those other videos I was talking about thanks again for tuning in and have a great night thanks everyone